this week we're going to be discussing Noman Khan. Listen to what he had to say. He <laughs> said, so, "You want to listen to this? Are you ready? Are you ready? No, no I'm not. Never time. ready for these things, Horace. But come on, then. Nice, no, funny. It's no, no. It's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm sure you have a lot to add on that. So have, have, have a listen. Girl came to me in Boston. She said, "I left the stuff." She said, "I left the stuff." I said, "Why did you leave the stuff?" I said, why? What does Surah Rahman do to you? She says, oh, in Surah Rahman, Allah begins with Ar-Rahman, and he's so oh, loving yeah. and caring and merciful, and in the middle of the Surah, he starts talking about hell. The, the, this is so funny. You, uh, sorry, guys, I know I have to break it up. I have to break it up just to save ourselves from these copyright strikes. Um, but, um, but, but it's funny that, you know, he talks about her genuine concern, but then look at the rebuttal, look at the clarification, look at the answer he gives you. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat here. I really want to see how he turns this around. No, don't, 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 don't hold your breath. He's going to be just as stupid as you. Actually, it's going to be stupider than what you would have thought. Oh, thanks um, for the but, warning. Okay. All right. But up until this point, or by the time you actually get to hear his explanation, I want you to come up with analogies. This is your task. Come up with analogies in the comment section after he uh, gives his verdict that why it is that way so so begins with surah rahman begins with allah is the most merciful blah 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 and then talks about hell and how people are going to burn and how people are going to be tortured how can allah that is so full of love and left not torture people how can you do that i don't have a long okay. conversation with her but i'll just share one thing with you the, the description of jahannam in surah rahman is one of the most terrible descriptions in the whole quran <laughs> the following description is rated r for graphic oh, yeah. words and yeah. seriously scary content Thank you, you for acknowledging it's that. Disgusting. It's disgusting. Thank yeah, you. It is visibly, it is, it's actually disturbing to even read. It's like disturbing. somebody, yeah. And when you, and when you visualize it, you know, like when we, we make fun of Muhammad because, you know, the splitting of the moon and Muhammad flying to heaven on a winged donkey and, you know, all these things, when you visualize them and who is in the heaven and Allah will be given the, the top rank, the Janathis, the top rank the most pious men in, in heaven they're gonna Allah is gonna hand feed them uh alcohol so you know, when you visualize <laughs> these things yeah yeah what the hell it's like not even yeah, the service the, the, at the, the VIP bar wow Allah there are Thank no, you. There are three standard have you not heard of it there, there, there are three kinds of genity people the, yeah. the pious people in heaven number one yeah. bottom one it's all they, men so gonna, I don't really care women aren't really gonna get the treatment it's funny but yeah yeah, but they're poor. the The lowest of the low, they they're gonna have to get off their bums, you know, when they're having good time with their huris. They're gonna have to get up and they're gonna have to pour their own wine. The number two will have their, you know, uh, young sexy boys, <laughs> apparently. Yeah, because that's or, what we get was women. I was wondering if you guys have access to the same boy servants. Yeah, yeah, we do, we do. Okay. Uh, so, so that's the number two. So they're gonna have boy servants who're gonna who who are gonna bring them wine uh, whenever you need them. Beautiful the boys degree. with earrings. Yeah. Yes, and, and and young, young. I think the, the, the beautiful the boys with earrings. Take that and as you will. One, yeah. And the third one is Allah is going to give them, provide them with wine Himself. Mate, I do Allah, not want Allah, Allah feeding me wine with two hands and spill it all over me. Both right hands. <laughs> both, both of his hands and right hands. How is he going to fill the container? That that that's yeah. I know. Is <laughs> he going to is he going to decant it for us with his two hands? Allah's, like he's a Allah the sommelier. <laughs> Allah who has both right hands. I think wow. his job, simple tasks are going to be harder than T-Rex. Well, Horace, no, you know, it's because that's why when you see waiters and they hold a tray like that, Allah's probably a pro. <laughs> you know when waiters <laughs> bring that bring your drinks to you on a tray, Allah's like... <laughs> But what if the wine is there and you have to grab the glass? Okay, should I grab the glass or should I grab, grab a bottle of wine? What, what do I do? I mean, I'm if confused. you're really lucky, you might even get a glimpse of his shin. Who knows? A little shin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there, there, there is a meme. There's a very funny meme where this jihadi looking guy is just having fun with his beautiful hoories and Allah is just peeping in. Allah is a peeping tomboy. <laughs> a peeping Tom. Peeping oh, Tom. My gosh. Peeping um, Tom Sumilia. Can I top your drink up for you? Mr. Jihadi. Yes. Not <laughs> now. Like, don't you see him in the middle of something? <laughs> I'm in the middle of his... Oh, by the way, uh, a, a normal sexual intercourse lasts 40 years. So Allah would be like, outside, yeah. come on, when are you going to be done? I... Okay, no, but I'll apparently they say like 40 years for us is like a blink for Allah or whatever the time lapses. So, but, then it's, but, that, but then it's crap. 
then it's like if I so it's so a 40, 40 years is gonna just be a blink. I'm like, oh man, I I I just got my barely got my pants down. I don't know for you, maybe <laughs> it's over already. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Isn't that what you're used to anyway, Horace? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. And then they're bringing time dilation and everything. Anyway, all right, we we dig we've digressed. Right. Let's let's we digress, do the rest yeah. of it. So 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 he's talking about Allah being merciful oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. at the same time talking about how scary the hell is going to be according to him let's listen in context you will listen to those words when people are being boiled alive and then when they're being boiled they look at the fire on the other side and say maybe the fire is better so they leave the boiling water and they run towards the fire the fire burns them so hot they can see the boiling water they say no i should go towards the boiling water instead oh my god what a horrible horrible description of what is going oh yeah and so, yet so you're still a muslim <laughs> okay you're still a muslim no no but, but look how he's gonna Look how he's going I want to wanna see. But, I'm on this. I'm literally on the edge of my seat here. Please, can we just hear what he has to say? Let me build it up. Let me build it up. Okay. Oh, look at him. He. But look how descriptive that is. But I, I, I want, I want people to focus on this. What kind of a torturous, evil, worse than Ted Bundy kind of an evil, evil being this is? That he's torturing people. He's all, he's looking. The only. I, I think I wrote that in my book. That the only thing missing in that verse was. That evil laugh from Allah. Ha ha ha. Because there's no, another it's verse the more ha, ha 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 if it's evil. Yes. Because in that verse there, uh, there's one more verse where it says, Allah says that, ah, are you happy now? See, you did this. At the end, all you have to do is like, ha ha ha. I got you. How evil is this, Nuria? Like, I mean, no, we this don't is, even do this. This is like literally people, psychopathic. It's not normal. But they're crying. Some of this, the only crime is, sorry, God, not enough evidence. I don't believe in you. That's yeah. it. That's the only crime. Yeah. They've, or they've fed... they never knew about you even, and they're just living their lives in the Amazon, worshipping nature and their deist, girl, pantheistic views. And some Muslims will say they get spared, but no one do you really think they get no, spared. No, no um, the Quran is pretty clear on that. Quran exactly. Is, there's Quranic verse. It says that their good deeds will blow away uh, like ash. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter as if they don't believe in a lot, then that's it. The good deeds will blow away. With and them. Harish, just one point to emphasize the description and the effect it has on readers when they actually read this descriptive language in the Quran in their own language. I was listening to a British atheist um, man talk yesterday, and he was saying that when he read the Quran for like research purposes, he's like the, the, the amount that like of hate and like anger and terror and please don't do that. Um, the amount of hate and anger and terror that he got off the pages that was referring to him as a like unbeliever. He's like, I left, I came away from reading the Quran feeling actually dehumanized. Like not even that I was like the lowest of, uh, like I'm the lowest of the hierarchy with other humans, but I am the lowest, like the worst of creatures. Do you know what I mean? And that's why like even when Saleh Apostate was saying to us last week, it's not surprising that like the French word for cockroach is what you call unbelievers or non-Muslims because they're not even compared to the worst of humans. You're compared to like maggots and worms and cockroach, the worst of creatures. And when he actually like that hurt me thinking this, this poor guy is reading the Quran and he actually feels sick and dehumanized because of the way God supposedly loving or merciful a Rahman a Rahim God that Noman Ali Khan is talking about is also insulting and calling his own creatures scum because they, their message has been corrupted or they refuse to follow his things. And the, these descriptions about how they're going to burn, while, again, how narcissistic is this? When, on the flip side, when you're being fed wine from God in his two hands or, you know, having your servant boys and, you know, you're having your, your virgin girls, you're also reclining on sofas and watching these people scammer between choosing to be boiled alive or burnt alive. And each time they realize one is worse than the other and they're just in this state of limbo, scramming from one place to another. And you think about your friends who aren't Muslims or you think about people, hopefully our friends think about people like us who are potentially gonna be in there according to the Islamic worldview. And that makes you physically sick. Yeah. Um, uh, let's just, uh, are you ready for his response? Ready. Horrible description, horrible. What's going to happen in Jahannam? And does it scare you by the way? Does that scare you at all? Because it scares me. Oh, it does. no wonder you're still a Muslim, mate, because you're scared of no it. No wonder she left sense. Islam. No yeah. wonder she left Islam. Exactly. She scared her so much. She said, no, I don't want to be a part of this group anymore. <laughs> this, 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 
And as soon as yeah. you get scared, what does he say? وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ Whoever got scared of standing in front of his Rabb, he gets two Jannahs. The whole point of scaring you was to guarantee you Jannah. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> So, <laughs> what? So, he, so God is being cruel to be kind, yeah? That's his MO Yeah, so here. it's like, Let me fear you, you into submission to show you my love. That's exactly. my love. My, your fear is my love. Exactly. I'm not a tyrant narcissist, evil, no, jealous no, 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 God. No, no. My fear is your love. Your fear is my and love. I, I know other people have drawn this analogy as well. It's the same thing. An abusive husband or a boyfriend beats up his wife. Or scares him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do these things or whatever, and she's petrified, scared. Oh, you scared? Oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna give you. Love. Or in other words, he's basically saying, all you gotta do is just, I've scared you. Now it's my way or the highway. You know, I've scared you. I've scared you. Now you're scared, and now you believe in my, in my ideology or my religion. Now you believe in me. Okay, now you can go to Jannah. Which so, also lends it extends and lends itself to things like, um, you know, the, the fine line between fear and love. And when you're in a situation where there's a power dynamic, your concept of fear, your your like your understanding of fear can actually like flip the balance and lend itself towards feelings of ad like adoration or love for that. Mm -hmm. But and again, it will lead to things like Stockholm syndrome because now you're scared, there's a power dynamic involved and you know nothing else. And your critical faculties, faculties have been absolutely stunted since you were young. So all of those are the perfect like ingredients for Stockholm syndrome for life as a worshiper or a Muslim believer or a slave of Allah, let's call them slaves of Allah, yeah. And that's yeah. it. You're a slave. You're a slave. Now that you that's fear it. me, you're a good little that's slave. It. Now we yes. can get on to the real business. <laughs> but then, but here's, but here's the part. Yeah, you 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 hit the nail right on his head. Um, you are a slave, and when you talk to a Muslim, they don't see that as a bad thing. They say, "Yeah, we are." Th there's this guy who's running around like his, his name is Jesus, slave of Allah, and he yeah, himself I know. Is slave of Allah, and and they, <laughs> and they love being. The slaves of Allah, but he's not saying that here. He's like, no, the whole point, you know, God was just playing a practical joke on you. He was yeah. just saying, you know, this is what I do. He had no intention of doing it. What does it mean? So is he lying? Is he a liar? Then that's crap. He's he, he if he can't fulfill his promises that he's gonna do this to some people, then he's a liar. Then he's a liar. If he's not gonna do it, he's a liar. If you say, oh, he's only lying to, so you. You don't end up in hell, but again, who's going to make the decision that he whether he ends up in hell or not? Him. So this whole him thing from when you're in the womb, mate. So really, what chance do you have? Yeah, there's a hadith of the prophet that says that the the uh, as soon as it's conceived in mother's womb, that's when it's decided whether he's going to be a good person or a bad person. Mm -hmm. Allah has decided it. So, exactly, and also, just, um, that, so again, that 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 that's when free will in Islam becomes extremely problematic. But that's a whole other can of yeah. worms. But also, in a situation like uh, you probably get this all the time, Harris. But when people leave or they 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 realize Islam might be problematic, or come on, who tortures somebody to this extent? Or like you know, do, does you always think about? proportionality and like the reasonableness of a punishment right in terms of is it proportional to the crime and you think of quite a lot of crimes that you could casually do under sharia and you just look at the punishment and you're like that is not proportional i mean maybe if you really wanted to sit down and like put your heads together and think okay to any of the sharia hadood punishments if they were applied on hitler would we mind so much i don't know that's a different story but again i would think no even somebody like that eternal yeah. eternal it yeah. Eternal punishment is not proportional to a terrestrial, um, de like finite life. It just does not add up. But when they yeah. see that Islam might be problematic, what you face a lot of the time is because they are so used to whether you're Christian or Muslim or whatever you are, especially the Abrahamic faiths, there's such an element of master servitude and slave master element to it that the reason they can't jump to atheism, atheism is because, and I think. Even Majid Nawaz maybe stayed in the fold here, or you see a lot of Muslims stay in this fold, is because if I leave Allah behind, who, what, which master do I be a slave to? Because I can't fathom a world where there is no master and I'm free to run my life and, you know, have my own destiny and carve out my own path. They believe in Qadr and destiny and these things. So if it's not Allah, there is surely another master I need to be a slave to. And I just think that as a human being, 
being on earth for a short amount of time, having essentially one life that's all we know exists, to spend your life looking left, right and center and under flying carpets and on top of flying mules to find a master to worship is just really a disservice to you as a human being. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's wrap this up. So the whole point, he scared you and said, did you get scared? Okay, then you get two jannas. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. <laughs> SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Everything's okay again. <laughs> Let's just forget about all of that. SubhanAllah. If, Mah if Muhammad said, if Muhammad said, oh, wash your hands after going to Torah, SubhanAllah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Allah, what wisdom. How wise are these people? Damn. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.